So, good morning and uh, welcome back to NPTEL course on classics in total synthesis part 1. And we have been talking about uh, total synthesis of uh, various alkaloids and we will continue our discussion on total synthesis of one more uh, alkaloid, a well known uh, alkaloid called reserpine. So, so the reserpine and yohimbine, another alkaloid, if you look at these two alkaloids you can find some commonalities between these two. They are pentacyclic compound and uh, only reserpine has more substituents. Uh, basically it has one more substituent here, you can see uh, that is a substituted benzoic acid attached to the hydroxyl group and this was isolated uh, from the dried root of uh, Indian snake root. Actually earlier uh, this reserpine was used for the treatment of snake bites, insanity, etc. And you can look at this molecule how complex this molecule is. So, the structural illustration took quite some time after it was isolated took almost uh, uh, 2 decades to arrive at the correct structure of reserpine and finally it was uh, the correct structure was proposed in 1953 and it took 2 more years to propose the correct absolute configuration. A year later the first total synthesis of this complex alkaloid was reported by none other than the father of modern organic synthesis R.B. Woodward. Okay. Of course, there are many synthesis of reserpine afterwards, but in this lecture we will talk about how Woodward thought about and successfully completed the total synthesis of reserpine. Okay. So, when you look at the molecule, obviously it is quite complex and what are the challenges one can see when you look at this reserpine. And that time I am talking about about 70 years ago when this molecule was isolated and then structure was proposed, it was the most complex natural product isolated and then obviously when, when you have more challenging structure available, many synthetic chemists were interested in developing new strategies for the synthesis of reserpine and of course, uh, Woodward was the first one to complete the synthesis. Uh, if you have a closer look at this natural product, you can see there are 5 contiguous chiral centers. One, two, three, four, five. There is one more here. There are six chiral centers and in that five are in one ring. This E ring has five chiral centers. That makes uh, this molecule quite complex. And more closer look at this natural product will suggest that there are 21 atoms, okay? 21 atoms put up in five rings. Okay? So, these are the real challenges when you talk about total synthesis of uh, reserpine. Uh, from synthetic point of view, what Woodward thought was, see this is indole ring, is not it? This is indole ring, substituted indole. And if you take this nitrogen also, it is like tryptamine. Okay? So, he thought if we have to succeed in total synthesis of reserpine, first thing is he has to focus on E ring. Okay, e ring has 5 chiral centers. Okay. So, that was the idea of Woodward as well as many people who followed after Woodward's total synthesis. So, they wanted to make the E ring first, then add D and then you add A, B and C. So, this is how most of the synthesis of reserpine were reported. And when you look at E and D ring, okay, D and E ring, when you see the ring junction is cis the ring junction is cis and the E ring is 6 membered. E ring is 6 membered, D ring is 6 membered. So, when you have a 6 membered ring which is attached to another 6 membered ring and the ring junction is cis, so one reaction one can think of is Diels-Sol reaction. As you know Diels-Sol reaction will normally uh, give cyclohexenes and one can also properly plan and then think about having a cis ring junction. Okay, so, that is what many people did and if you look at C D ring, C D ring junction, G C D ring junction can be epimerized, can be epimerized at under acidic condition. Here if you look at C D ring junction the hydrogen is beta. Okay. So, how these are all fixed uh, in the total synthesis of reserpine let us have a look at. 
So, let us start with Woodward's total synthesis. So, though that time uh, the retro synthesis was not known. So, in his thought process what Woodward thought was he wanted to use a Bischler Napriolsky synthesis. Okay. So, if you have this D E ring then he can easily connect with the indole using Bissler Napriolsky synthesis. Okay. And once you have this, so this is a commercially available compound, so methoxytryptophan. And if you have E ring with two substituents, two substituents, then it should be possible to make this. Okay. That was the idea. And this can be obtained from this aldehyde. So, when you have this aldehyde and this amine, it can form an imine. Okay. That imine, if you reduce its sodium, so sodium borohydride, it will form secondary amine. That secondary amine will attack this ester directly to give this compound. So, he simplified the target molecule that is reserpine to this highly substituted E ring of reserpine. Now, if you look at this, it is a penta substituted E ring with a cis ring junction, okay. penta substituted E ring with cis ring junction. Okay. So, now as I said he wanted to use diel sol reaction as the key reaction. See when you talk about diel sol reaction, okay, now you have to keep either diene or dienophile static. Okay. So, then what you do? If you are keeping diene static, then the dienophile can approach the diene either from the top phase or from the bottom phase. So, he started with the diel sol reaction between this diene having a carboxylic acid and benzoquinone where this double bond will act as dienophile. So, from the stereochemical outcome what you do? You keep the diene static, okay. diene you keep the diene static. Now, the dienophile approaches the diene from the bottom phase, there are two phases is not it? It can approach either from the top phase or bottom phase okay, of the diene. This is the top phase, this is the bottom phase. So, first let us see when the dienophile that is quinone approaches the diene from the bottom phase. So, this is the tension state that will give you this product. Okay, I will leave it for few seconds just to see whether this is the correct structure. Okay. This is what you get if the dienophile approaches the diene from the bottom phase of the diene. Okay. And this can be written, okay. this can be written like this. Now, another interesting thing is if you want to carry out any reaction on this double bond or this carbonyl or this carbonyl or this double bond, the reagents will attack only from the con convex phase. Okay. This is the convex phase. Okay. This is the convex phase. From this place only the reagents will attack because that is the least hindered. Okay. So, now what I have done if you look at I have drawn this in the two dimensional form. Okay. Is it clear? Now, what I have done is what I have done is I have rotated this compound. I have rotated this compound and written like this. Okay. Are they same? Are they same? Yes. Okay. They are same. So, this is one way to look at the Dilsal reaction where the dienophile approaches the diene from the bottom phase. Now, what we will do? Same thing we will do where the dienophile approaches from the top phase. So, now you see your diene is static, but the dienophile approaches from the top phase. Okay, this is the top phase. Okay. That will give you this product. That will give you this product. Okay. Again, can it be drawn like this? Can it be drawn like this? Look at this. So, you have this 
cyclohexene diene ok that is here then the other ring with carboxylic acid is here ok. Of course, as you know the diels sal reaction the major product is the endo product. So, so that is why you see the whole dienophile hmm, is just above the diene. Now, can you rotate this? Can you rotate this? How do you rotate? You go through this plane, go through this plane and rotate it by 180 degree. Okay. If you go through this plane and rotate it by 180 degree, you will get this. So, this is the first step of the total synthesis of reserpine reported by Woodward. Now, he treated with sodium borovide ethanol. So, there are two carbonyl groups okay. and this carbonyl group will have this carbonyl group will have hydrogen bonding with carboxylic acid. So, obviously one can selectively reduce this carbonyl group and I already told you here only the convex phase is more open. So, the reagent will come from the convex phase that means the hydride will be delivered from alpha. When the hydride is delivered from alpha the alcohol will be beta ok. So, what you get is the beta alcohol ok what you get is the beta alcohol. Now, if you take this compound and then treat with MCPBA, if you take this compound and treat with MCPBA, what will you get? There are two double bonds, double bond 1, double bond 2, which double bond it will epoxidize? Question number 1. Question number 2, whether the epoxide will be alpha or beta. Okay. To answer our questions, one is alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So, that needs alkaline hydrogen peroxide. The other one that is second alkene is electron rich alkene. So, you need normal parasites. So, between these two only two will be epoxidized when you treat with MCPBA. That is the answer for question number 1. Answer for question number 2 whether the epoxide will be alpha or beta. As I told you the convex phase is the free phase. So, that means the epoxide will come from the alpha side. So, when you do that this is what you get. Okay. Now, you have a hydroxyl group and you have a carboxylic acid group. If you treat with acetic anhydride sodium acetate what will happen? This will form an ester cyclic ester that is called lactone. Okay, this carboxylic acid and this alcohol will couple to form a lactone. Okay. Next you have few more functional groups and the enone, the enone if you reduce under MPB reduction condition that is Mirvin Pondorf Verli reduction condition this carbonyl group will be reduced. Again alpha phase is more free the hydride will come from the alpha phase. So, you get beta alcohol, but what you get is this compound. Okay. So, that is the beta alcohol and does not stop there. The beta alcohol now it attacks this carbonyl of the lactone and opens this. The reason is this will give you a 5 member lactone this will give you a 5 member lactone whereas if you look at this this is a 6 member lactone. So, 5 member lactone is preferred over 6 member lactone and does not stop there ok after opening the lactone the intermediate does not stop there. What happens this O minus attacks the epoxide this O minus attacks the epoxide and you get the corresponding ether cyclic ether and alcohol corresponding cyclic ether. So, there is a 5 membered cyclic ether and alcohol ok. This is what you get when you do when you take the lactone this lactone and then treat it under MPB reduction condition. And of course, if you see this hydroxyl group it is beta beta to this carbonyl. 
So it is a good leaving group under this condition otherwise hydroxyl is not a good leaving group it undergoes elimination to give the corresponding alpha beta unsaturated lactone ok understood. So in one reaction it is MPV reduction condition how many reactions are taking place and what is more important is those days NMR was not there, crystal structure was not there ok with just UV, IR, melting point they could assign correct structure for many such interesting transformations ok, products arising out of many such interesting transformation. So now when you treat this with sodium methoxide and methanol, so sodium methoxide will add in a 1,4 fashion again the alpha phase is the free one. So, because of convex phase, so the methoxy will come from the alpha cell and while quenching the enolate also this hydrogen also will come from the alpha cell ok. So, in, in few steps you could get this complex tetracyclic structure starting from benzoquinone using Diels-Alder reaction as the key reaction ok. Later he also used a very simple method ok, he improved the method which he had used and got the same intermediate in few steps. How? Instead of carboxylic acid what he did was he used ester. His idea is when you do the Diels-Alder reaction, when you do the Diels-Alder reaction, now instead of selectively reducing only this carbonyl, why do not you reduce both carbonyls? Why do not you reduce both carbonyls? So, when you do that directly this ketone when it is reduced it will form the 5 member lactone ok. Now you have the allylic alcohol ok. This allylic alcohol can be functionalized but the problem is how do you know you got only the 5 member lactone and not the 6 member lactone? How do you know that you got only the 5 member lactone and not the 6 member lactone ok. Those days you know you can use IR and 5 member lactone where it will come and 6 member lactone where it will come. So, 5 member lactone you get around a very strong peak around 1770 whereas for 6 member it is between 1730 and 1740. He got only this because the IR peak was around 1770. So, that confirmed that he got only the 5 member lactone. So, once you have this lactone now, if you treat with bromine and methanol, if you treat with bromine and methanol, again the bromine will attack only from the alpha side. Once the bromine attacks from the alpha side that is bromonium ion, the free hydroxyl will attack and it forms the cyclic ether ok. Now, if you treat with sodium methoxide and methanol, if you treat with sodium methoxide and methanol you get the compound which we discussed in the previous slide. So if you look at the stereochemistry, if you look at the stereochemistry you see the bromine is alpha and methoxy also is alpha, bromine is alpha, methoxy is alpha. So what does it mean? So do you think we are talking about uh, uh, not SN2 reaction, SN2 means it should be beta, the methoxy should be beta. But what is happening is here the sodium methoxide acts as a base as well as nucleophile. As a base it eliminates HBr, it eliminates HBr and then it gives this intermediate. Once you get this intermediate sodium methoxide now acts as a nucleophile ok. Then it undergoes 1,4 addition and you get this product. So, this is the same intermediate you saw in the earlier slide but that took more steps. Here it, it took only only you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 steps you could make this compound starting from benzoquinone ok. Once you have this next you have one more double bond and treat with NBS water. If you have a double bond and then treat with NBS water it will give bromohydrin, it will give bromohydrin. Where will the bromine go? Where will the hydroxyl come? Obviously the bromine will be alpha. That is the first step is in the bromonium ion formation. The bromonium ion will come from the alpha side, then the hydroxyl group which opens the bromonium ion will come from the beta side. So, this is what you get. 
ok. Now if you oxidize the secondary alcohol, if you oxidize the secondary alcohol using chromium trioxide aqueous acetic acid you get the keto ok. Here he did another very interesting reaction to get the precursor for the total synthesis of the The key reaction is see you have a bromine and you have a carbonyl group. What he did? He treated with zinc acetic acid. The zinc acetic acid is known to give one electron, is not it? So, first it opened the, the cyclic ether. At the same time, it also opened the lactone, starting with donating electron to carbonyl group. When this happens, carefully you see the arrow which I have written, ok. Then what you get is this combo. I will leave it for a few seconds so that you can understand how does it happen, ok. So, you get essentially you get a cyclohexenone and if you look at this E ring, if you look at the E ring all the 5 chiral centers though it is a relative stereochemistry, it is not a symmetric synthesis, it is a relative stereochemistry, all the 5 chiral centers are fixed, all the 5 chiral centers are fixed, ok. Now, what you did? The carboxylic acid was esterified with diazomethane and the free hydroxyl was acetylated in two steps you get this okay. And for the intermediate which you want what you need is you need to cleave the double bond and you, you should get a aldehyde here and you should get an ester. So, that is very simple you take this compound and then treat with osmium tetroxide. When you treat with osmium tetroxide you get the diol. The diol now if you treat with periodic acid followed by treatment with the diazomethane. So, this side it will become aldehyde and this whole thing will become carboxylic acid followed by treatment with so diazomethane it will become CO2 Me. If you look at the retrosynthesis or whatever synthesis Woodward has planned, he planned using this, is not it? So, he wanted to treat that aldehyde with methoxytryptophan and then reduce it with sodium borohydride to get the lactam. So, you took this and then treated with the corresponding amine, it formed the imine, then reduction with sodium borohydride, methanol, reduce the imine and that also spontaneously cyclized with the ester to form the cyclic lactam, ok. So, C ring is ready, D ring is ready, already A B ring you started with the corresponding with oxytryptophan, ok. Now, we have to make the C ring, C ring is the last ring to be made and then C ring has one chiral center and based on the earlier reports the chiral center is when you when you want to generate normally you get the other one, ok. So, POCl3 sodium borohydride that these are the standard conditions used for Bischler an Aprialski reaction. So, it forms this uh, aluminium intermediate then addition elimination takes place to give the corresponding aluminium. So, C ring is formed in C2 you reduce with sodium borohydride you get the complete pentacyclic structure of wood uh, reserpine. There are two things missing in this one the acetate should be replaced by OCO and then aryl group and the second thing is in reserpine this particular chiral center has beta carbon, this particular chiral center has a beta carbon. But this is the most stable conformation, this is the most stable conformation. So, how you can change the stereochemistry? Okay, if you draw a 6 membered chair like conformation, you can see this is how you can draw the 6 membered chair conformation for what you got in this reaction. But as I said, for reserpine, this is the stable conformation where you can see this hydrogen is beta, whereas here this hydrogen is alpha. So, you have to change that. How do you change 1? you can think about nitrogen inversion. So, if you do nitrogen inversion, okay, if you do nitrogen inversion everything will change, 
every confirmation so this you know if if it is equatorial methox is equatorial ester is equatorial acetate is equatorial when you flip it it will become axial and same thing here so the whole indole unit it will come axial so this is nitrogen inversion which can be done by treating with acid okay now afterwards if you reduce it then that can come here okay that can go to this one so this conformational equilibrium can be utilized okay so first you treat with acid so it flips then during this process you are locking the conformation you should lock the conformation then only it will not go back so these two so one is ester another one is acetate so if we can lock this conformation through a lactone formation through a lactone formation then this is what you will get then followed by just open it you get a, get the most stable conformation of the surface okay so what you did you whatever you got this is what you got when you did the total synthesis this is what you got where you have alpha hydrogen here but what you want is beta you took this compound and then treated with potassium hydroxide methanol potassium hydroxide methanol acetate will get hydrolyzed and ester also will get hydrolyzed you get a carboxylic acid and hydroxyl group now to freeze the conformation what you have to do you have to make a 5 membered lactone between these two you have to make a 5 membered lactone between these two so if you treat this with dcc as i said it undergoes ring flipping and you get the lactone and you can see this one also this side also whole thing underwent ring flipping now if you treat with acid now if you treat with acid the whole thing whole thing will undergo epimerization and you will get this conformation now if you look at this hydrogen is beta okay from alpha you brought it to beta next is just cleave this lactone cleave this lactone with sodium ethoxide methanol so when you do that you get this compound okay now if you look at these three substituents methoxy hydroxyl and ester they are all in axial position so that is not stable that is not stable so what it will do it will undergo ring flipping when it undergoes ring flipping this is what you get because everything will will be in equatorial position now okay and same way this also will undergo exactly opposite ring flipping now still you see this hydrogen is beta earlier it was beta axial here now beta equatorial okay so that is how he cleverly used acidic condition and the locking the conformation followed by acidification to get that <laughs> then what you do you have the free hydroxyl group attach the trimethoxy benzyl chloride that is a side chain present in reserpine so that is how the total synthesis of reserpine was completed successfully by Robert Woodward okay, this is really very very important total synthesis reported in 1960s one of the classical synthesis and it is taught in almost all textbooks okay thank you